Welcome to a new edition of Flavors and Knowledge. It's a new year, new show. We come to you from Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath Designer Showcase Showroom. That's right. I'm Good like, job, how, man. How you doing? Walter? Happy 2020. Yeah, I was, so for folks that are probably maybe just joining us, what we've been trying to accomplish with this show, different regions in Italy. And now we're heading all the way down to the heel of the boot. Right. I think that uh, it's very important for us to deliver the message. It is called Flavors and Knowledge mm -hmm. after all. So we try to, to share flavors and the knowledge of the region. Okay. So Puglia, right? Puglia mm -hmm. is the, what we call the heel of the country. It's uh, probably one of the wealthiest region in terms of culinary richness, yeah. uh, Stephen, and uh, it's been getting more and more attention lately. Uh, Tuscany was years ago, mm -hmm. and now Puglia is the place to be. Beautiful beaches, right? There are. It's an entire coast. It's the longest coastline in, no uh, in, a, in a region. And uh, wow. well known for a variety of products, uh, you, you know, you probably know about the wines. They yeah. have uh, I was reading about the pasta, some mo most, not, not all, but a good percentage the pasta comes from uh, Puglia. Some of the best wheat uh, is uh, from uh, Puglia. In addition to that, Puglia exports uh, uh, some of the finest olive oil in yes. Italy, the extra virgin throughout the world. So I get a feeling we're going to do something with olive oil and pasta. We have that, and <laughs> today we begin with uh, the classic. There are hundreds of dishes that we could have chosen. Mm -hmm. Uh, we picked a uh, few that I think that classic again okay. and orecchiette with the broccoli is one of them So we're gonna Ooh. begin nice. and uh, The steps are very easy as it is in most cases in Italian uh, Cuisine right, so, show us chef show us so you'll begin you put the pasta. We have a dry, a dry orecchiette here Okay, uh, I mean, and you I, know what or orecchiette stands for right? Little right? Ears, right? That's right. Little ears. Yeah, All right, so they're not difficult to make but yeah. uh, so, and this is your spoon. Okay. We usually stay a pasta sure. with a spoon. Oh, yeah. Okay. All the time. Yep. Beautiful. And I'll begin with the side. Get that going. Right. In the meantime, Stephen, we're going to begin a couple of dishes. The second one, we're going to do a lentil. And so we're going to begin by cooking the base for the lentil. Okay. This particular dish has pancetta as well. Nice. So we're going to start on this. So you can okay. help me watch in the two yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So but tell I'm us a little bit about Puglia. I'm sure you've been there a few times. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we're going back. I'm going back actually uh, uh, right in the middle of the month in January. I'm going What's the architecture like? Beautiful? Well, there is a lot of history. Uh, as you know, Lecce, especially Lecce, the city of Lecce has the second amount of Baroque art in the world. So no kidding. And rivals who were Versailles in France. Wow. So it's very nice. Great. So what we're going to do here is a little bit of garlic. What we need to do while we wait for the pasta okay. is actually saute the garlic with, uh, with the broccoli. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how to cook the broccoli with the pasta together. Nice. That's cool. All right. I'm gonna keep Meantime, you're going to do the pancetta for me. Oh. And you're going to render that fat. Yep. Right here. My pleasure. Yep. And I'm going to load the fire. So what we're doing here, we actually... Garlic is very tricky, so we try to take the garlic off the fire. We don't want it to burn, right? Right, and we extract what well, is probably the most important aspect of garlic. It's called allicin, which develops uh, sulfur, mm -hmm. and that's uh, the taste that we like. Nice. Unlike what most people tend to believe, Italians don't really ingest a lot of garlic. We cook with garlic, but we don't really eat it. As a matter of fact, we tend to leave the garlic cl uh, cloves whole in a in a cooking process yes. and then you decide if you need it to, to ingest it or not right. Right. because the key is to remove that particular sulfur that the garlic has okay. so we're going to give it the we're going to give it the broccoli a la quick stir and a little flavoring and the pan is a little bit on high heat for now good okay all right good Pancetta is going. Pancetta is going, and that is going to have a trilogy, celery, carrots, and onion. That's the foundation in most of the Mediterranean or Southern Italian cuisine. Uh, the trilogy, celery, carrots, and onion, again, is fundamental. And, of course, the lentil, we are using a lentil from uh, the town of uh, Altamura. Altamura is also well known for making some of the best bread in the world. The bread of Altamura is protected. The ingredients that they use is, of course, Pugliese wheat, uh, but the process is really intricate, and the bread is humongous. And uh, they send wedges, you can purchase it online, as of today, 
the way Joe Breda comes in to you really? through, yes, through one of the shipping business. I think I read uh, when I was looking up Puglia that they even make, with that, I think they use that bread to make giant pretzels. I think there's a name for it. Like That's right. right. They, uh, they are known okay. for Tarallucci. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They are known for a variety of different desserts. Right. The most, uh, the one that comes to mind is called pasticciotto, one that it's made in a city of Lecce, a beautiful crust filled with pastry cream, rich cream with the eggs and yep. flavoring. Yep. And then it's uh, covered and it looks like a little, uh, almost like a typical New England apple pie. Uh, absolutely delicious. Okay, this is yours. Making me hungry, Walter. Beautiful. And so you're cooking and uh, removing all the minerals and I'll take all your stuff. Thank you. Removing the minerals from the vegetable that are we using right now. Okay. So we sauteing that, we're doing this in a style of rice, you notice? Mm. So we add ingredients as One we One at got. a time, yeah. Right. Okay. And this is the trick. So you begin by cooking the orecchiette for about seven, eight minutes. And then the trick here is to actually in incorporate the broccoli and the garlic, which I have in this skillet, inside the pasta mm. together. Really? And uh, the timing, you want the broccoli to be al dente and you want the orecchietta to be al dente, okay? And then at the end, we had the ricotta. And again, uh, a region filled with an incredible amount of wines, typically the southern part of Puglia, Salice Salentino, is one of the wines that are well known all across the world. They are DOC. A wine that comes to mind is Primitivo from the town of Manduria. Incredible strength in grapes. Uh, grapes that were planted there by the settlers. Most of them were uh, uh, Phoenician and then Greeks, of it course. Sounds like because it's so far south in the country, that that's why the agriculture does so well. It's got a much warmer climate. And as you know, as you drive down the coast of Puglia, you see the Adriatic, which then turns into the Ionian Sea. Yeah. And on the inland, you see nothing but uh, thousands and thousands of uh, olive uh, trees. Wow. And so now we're going to add the broccoli inside. That's okay? interesting. Like mm. that. And we continue the cooking process, okay? So you can stir it if you like. Sure. Beautiful. We'll just take on what, another five, six minutes? Yeah, we're gonna bring this to a boil and then we'll complete it. We might go on break and then we'll complete the dishes right. as we go. In the meantime, I think that you're ready for the lentils. All right, great. Excellent. Lentils, are, as I said, are from the town of Altamura. It's a DOCG uh, protected. Uh, and Even that, no kidding. Oh yeah, no, these uh, Puglia has an incredible amount of ingredients that are protected, uh, protected by the European Union, which as you know, uh, they become, these dishes and these ingredients become uh, the, the spokesperson, if you will, for the culinary world, meaning that they represent the culture of, of those regions and in the town, just like Altamura Excellent. previously said, okay? Can we take a little break? Good. All right. We'll, we'll be take right a back. break. We will be right back. Excellent. Scrumptious veal parmigiana. Perfect polenta. Elegant eggplant. A prepared meal for you and your family. These are the ingredients of happiness. Tony's Colonial. From Italy with love. The showroom at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath is spectacular. The displays incorporate state-of-the-art features and conveniences uniquely developed by the design team here. Let's take a look. Hi, my name's Erica. I'm one of the design consultants here at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. And I just wanted to point out some cool under cabinet lighting that we have here in the showroom. So here you can see underneath this cabinet, it's really glowy. Um, this is using a thin LED light. And one thing that's cool about LED lighting these days is that you can also specify the color of the temperature that you want. So you can see right here, right now, it's a really warm glow. Well, I can also switch it to a cool glow. So depending on the color concepts that you have going on in your own home, you know, you can adjust that to achieve the look you want. Um, the other cool thing that we can do with cabinet lighting is we can put it inside the cabinet. So you can see here, um, this glass front cabinet is illuminated from inside, so it helps show off like any cool dishware or accessories that you have. And it also helps create another design element by breaking up some of the cabinetry. So it's a cool type of feature that we can work into a lot of different layouts in a lot of different ways. 
Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm one of the design consultants here at Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath. Um, I'm here in the showroom in front of one of our shower displays and I just wanted to show you guys something really cool that we have shown here. So, I'm sure you have seen something similar to this in a kitchen as a spice pullout, uh, but here we actually have it shown in a bathroom application. It's a great storage solution uh, for smaller cosmetic products and it's basically just built into the half wall where there would have been dead space behind, uh, but now you have something where you can actually hide away your items. Thank you all for watching. I'd like to invite you out to visit our showroom here at 139 Jefferson Boulevard here in Warwick to check us out and check out all the fun features we have shown. Hi, I'm Billy and I'm here to touch on a couple of these cool door closure systems that we've been seeing in our kitchens and bathrooms. Incorporating some of these cabinet hardware solutions not only allow for a clean, simple look and alleviate the need for hardware, but also give some really great storage solutions. If you'd like to check out some of these hardware options or other kitchen and bath displays, check us out at 139 Jefferson Boulevard or on the web at www.rikb.com. And we are back. There we, we go. Crazy in the kitchen. We've Absolutely. Got all kinds of stuff going on. So what's the next step, Chef? Well, here, uh, as you can the see, looks good. I, I have a beautiful uh, vegetable broth, broth 100%, yep. and I keep adding it. Okay. And we cook this lentil soup almost like a risotto. So we want it, we don't want it very liquidy, but we want it to reduce a little bit. Okay. So it's going to be served almost like a porridge, if you will. It's very, Time yeah, the tomato, tomato is good. Go in. Here, okay. I removed some of the water from this, from our orecchiette. We're going to do a little bit of uh, marine salt over the top, Stephen. Okay. okay. And we're going to do a little bit of marjoram here that we have. Ooh, marjoram. Flesh pepper. I like marjoram. I like the way it sounds. In the meantime, we start with another dish, which is, again, it's part of Puglia. We're going to do a little bracciolettine. Mm. Bracciolettine, it's a... Uh, Little stuffed pieces of veal that we have here, pounded lightly. Okay, and we're gonna work on this. In the meantime, look at, finish this look guy. at that. Look at that. That looks good. Okay, we're really rocking. So, you're almost done with that, and I am done with uh, uh, our orecchiette with broccoli. We finish it with ricotta, fresh ricotta of choice that you like. Mm. Now, if you did Robbie, would you do it the same way? You blanch it, put it in the water? Same you can. Uh, yeah. but Robbie is actually the classic, okay. but you can use broccoli as well. And this, what it makes it, it's a little bit of a cream. And as you reduce it with the water from the pasta water that's left from the uh, orecchiette, this will make a beautiful, beautiful sauce. dish. There we go. Yeah, we do a quick, uh, okay? Nice. Very nice. In the meantime. This looks good. We started dish uh, number three for the Puglia, and we are sauteing a little bit of uh, leeks here, Stephen, okay? okay? Then we had a little bit of parsley mm -hmm. and marjoram together. Okay. And then we'll do a little bit of uh, ground beef, okay? okay? Beautiful. So this is another dish? This is another meal. dish that we get started while we finish the other ones. I think this is done, Chef. That is done. Yep. We shut it off. And we serve it. There we go. Mmm. That's nice. And again, every time you have a legume, Stephen, you try to refrain from having cheese over the top. Okay. I was just going to ask you that. No cheese. No. You want to finish it with a little bit of extra virgin. And that calls it the day. Nice. Right? Okay, pasta's next. You can steer this for sure, me, the absolutely. mixing. Yep. I wanted this to reduce a little bit more. And then we'll work condition number three. Beautiful, that's gonna be part of a stuffing. Mm. So we do a little bit of black pepper there and a little bit of marine salt. And this is sublime, ladies and gentlemen. Look I wish you that. could taste this. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely, absolutely delicious. Let me put a little broccoli here. And this will g call for some uh, uh, pecorino. Now we put some cheese. And you know, I like mine spicy, so. Well, we, you're red, not. Red pepper. You are an, an Italian Mediterranean show and not in the Southwest. <laughs> okay, so these are the two. In the meantime, we'll work on 
All right. Is that done? The stuffing. So we begin with these uh, veal slices. You can use pork, you can use beef for the brajolette. Okay, Stephen? Pound it out. Slices? Yes, yep. they look pound like it out. Pound it out. And you mix with the uh, spinach. Okay. So you make a little mix for me. Sure. So that's going to go on the inside. We're going to go, go a little bit light on the black pepper because we already seasoned that. Right. Okay. And we're going to do a little bit of the fresh uh, chlorophyll, which is prevalent in the parsley. And of course, marjoram, which I prefer much more than oregano. Really? Oh, yes. Yep. Then we'll do a little bit of a pecorino on the inside. I think that's ready for you. Right? And what we do, <coughs> excuse me, we put just one little piece of garlic on each one. one. Mm. Yep. Nice. And there we go. Okay. Okay, Stephen? Stuffing's ready. The stuffing is ready. There you go. And we go. You put just a little amount. You don't want to put too much that it overflows. Right. Once we seal them. We're going to show you how to cook this with a tomato and a white wine sauce after the break. All right. If that's okay with you. Yep, we'll be right back. A platter of perfect pasta salad. Mouthwatering chicken cacciatari. Delicious panzanella salad. The perfectly catered party. These are the ingredients of happiness. Tony's Colonial. Eat happy. Welcome to the RI Kitchen and Bath Seminar Series, where you can learn the ins and outs of kitchen and bath remodeling and design from the experts themselves. Get inspired by seeing the latest products and designs in our beautiful showroom floor. So today's topics, we're going to go over kitchen and bath design trends, um, just a few things that we're going to touch on. Today's topics are going to include uh, levels of remodeling, budgeting, and then 10 steps to a successful remodel. I'm Joni and Dave from Bristol, Rhode Island and we've come here to uh, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath uh, seminar because we are starting a planning for redoing our kitchen and half bath laundry room. This is our second visit that we've done here and we really enjoy it very much and we're definitely going to use Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath because they take care of everything. It's important to have somebody, you know, working with you in this time to really help guide you through all of those decisions there are to make. Sometimes people are a little overwhelmed by how many decisions there really are. Uh, attention was paid to every detail. Um, it was a very thorough inspection before the project even started so that the company was already aware of any problems that already existed that had to be addressed and they were also able to alert us, my husband and myself, to any problems that also might occur. Say you plan your whole space, you go to put the toilet in, the building inspector comes out and you haven't left 15 inches from the wall to the center of your toilet and everything else is so tight that nothing else can move, that's not going to pass. So it's really important that you're measuring and taking into account all those different codes and stipulations. You know, we are a very well established company. We've been in business for 29 years. Um, we have kitchen and bathroom modeling down to a science, so we're very experienced in terms of the code requirements and safety regulations that need to be followed. We also have, you know, an award winning team of designers here. You know, we really offer people a lot of expertise and peace of mind in, you know, getting these projects done. Visit RIKB.com for a list of the upcoming seminars and to reserve a seat for the next event. Or come to our showroom floor located on Jefferson Boulevard in Warwick. The finest imported cheeses. A superlative selection of pasta. Quality delicatessen of every kind. These are the ingredients of happiness. Tony's Colonial. Eat happy. All right, Chef, we're back. What's the next step? And we complete Puglia with the third dish oh. of the session. We're going to do the brajolettina of veal. So I see you were doing a little roll in there, right? And before the break, we had the saute spinach, yeah, yeah. a little bit of uh, uh, ground beef in there, remember? Yes, yes. Little leeks. And now spinach. I roll them. Yep. And we roll the last guy. Okay. okay. And we put these inside here, the way they are. 
right. without putting any toothpicks. I'm nothing. just going to say no toothpicks. Nothing huh? at all. As soon as the villa touches it's the sealed. sauce, it, it, it sears it. And then what we're going to do is obviously keep pouring this over the top. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is going to cook for about 12 to 14 minutes. Veal cooks in relatively quick time. Mm. There's a lot of water content, and that water is going to be released into the sauce. Okay. Therefore, give it a nice, nice uh, taste. So okay. while we're talking about Puglia, and when I was reading, they said something about, they call it the little Florence. Why is that? Because of all of the art? Because the Seria Lecce is so rich in uh, Baroque architecture. How old is, is it? Go? How far back does it go? Well, Lecce uh, was known to be uh, around the Roman in, uh, Empire really? already. So. It's a city that it's uh, loaded, as I said, with uh, all kinds of architectural yeah. richness. Uh, and it's a, it's a cathedral, right? There's a beautiful the cathedral. The Duomo of Lecce yeah. is uh, astonishing. Uh, most of all, inside Lecce, there is a piazza called Piazza San Oronzo. Uh, Oronzo is the name of the saint, the patron mm -hmm. of the city mm -hmm. of Lecce. And there is an amphitheater right in the middle of the, of the city, excavated underground, where they do all kinds of performances. The Balkis singers such as Bocelli or many others. And they, uh, you know, they sing there. It's a beautiful place to visit. It's very much one of the wealthiest cities in terms of artistic value. So they export a lot of olive oil? Absolutely, olive Any oil. Any brand names or, or if somebody wanted to look for the Puglia olive oil? No, but it would be a good idea to, uh, every time you purchase olive oil, in order really to find out, especially with the new regulations mm -hmm. uh, about the EU, European mm -hmm. Union, which Italy is one of the uh, founder uh, members. You want to see in the back label the varieties of olives and where they come from. Right. Because in the EU laws, by the EU laws today, you can have a blended olive oil uh, with olives that come out of Crete, out of Greece, mm -hmm. Uh, Turkey or Northern Africa or whatever else. Yeah, a lot of counterfeit olive oil. A lot of right? counterfeit, yeah. so you need to be careful when it comes to that. So you want to find out, but most of all, try to buy for yourself always, Stephen, a single cultivar means one olive in a bottle or a blended cultivar, which means olives from several farms. Okay. And I think that's your, you know, your best uh, direction for quality. And the next thing point. that you ought to know is price is usually your guide. Mm. You know, you want to buy... Uh, a liter of olive oil of an extra virgin from Italy will go between uh, 20 to 32 to 34 dollars. So that's your price range. Right, right. Okay. That's a good point. This smells delicious. It's so beautiful. We need a few more minutes on this. Yeah. Can, uh, should we go on break a little bit? Yeah. No? Can we? Well, yeah, sure. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. The finest extra virgin olive oils. Imported balsamic vinegars from Modena. Italian specialties and gifts. These are the ingredients of happiness. Tony's Colonial, from Italy with love. We were looking for a company. We wanted a place that was had a great reputation, which um, Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath definitely does, and also where we could have everything done in one place. They were just unbelievably professional, clean, courteous, competent, beyond belief. Well, we were given a timeline that told that told us who was going to be be at the house at what time and what was going to take place. And every day I knew exactly what to expect, who was going to be there. It was right on went, target. Right on target. It went beautifully. And these people were design experts. That's what I felt. And uh, their ideas just clicked with what we were looking for. And we didn't even know it. Absolutely. I would agree with that 100%. These designers were moving us more into a lifestyle that we know we're going to live into and retire in. I think it was just how exceptional they are at all elements of what they do. Um, everything from the design consultation to pushing and prodding us in the right direction to help us make decisions about things. She came into our house and she talked to us and she found out what was important to us in the bathroom. And one thing was my ironing board and another thing was my laundry basket. <laughs> When we designed this bathroom, she made sure to incorporate fixes for those two problems. RI Kitchen and Bath, they sat there, they, looked, they kind of went through what we wanted to do, they kind of rolled it back and they came back to us. They were extremely... Um, detailed. Very detailed, they're very supportive every step of the way. We had, a, we had to go back and forth a bit about what 
the call wanted, but at the end of the day, they came through in flying colors. It was great. There was no problems at all. Everything went from A to Z, one, two, three. Everything was perfect. Jim Madison took care of every little detail and coordinated the arrival and departure of all the other trades. He's just such a pleasant guy to deal with. I would consider him a friend. You feel like your family. They really felt like family members. If I had a very deep, um, quality assurance type project that I needed tomorrow, the first place I would come, right here, all right, kitchen and bath. Because mm. they would treat me like family. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin O'Connor from This Old House and I am down here celebrating the 30th anniversary of Rhode Island Kitchen and Bath, uh, an organization that I have personally been working with over the last three to five years and uh, have found them to be a terrific outfit. It's a good group of people and I am very pleased to be associated with them. Hello, I'm Chef Walter Potenza. Join us on one of our food tours tour. We take you to Italy and we allow you to see Italy through the eyes of a chef. Check our website for upcoming tours in 2020 and 2021. Sicily, Puglia, Abruzzo, Tuscany, Piedmont. Anywhere we go, you'll come with us. Food through the eyes of a chef. Check the upcoming 2020 tours at italianculinarycenter.com. So chef, they're a dish from Puglia, you know, you, you, you make me want to go there now. And that's one part of, the, of Italy I've not seen yet, Puglia. We've got to get you there. Actually, yeah. uh, as you know, we do tours back there uh, in all over, uh, all over Italy, mm -hmm. regional Italy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our culinary food tours can be found at uh, italianculinarycenter.com. That's our website. The slogan is uh, food tours from the eyes and a palate of a chef. Great food, great uh, wines, great everything. Puglia is one uh, that is sold out, the one that we have in April. Nice. But we have another one, 2021. Excellent. And if, uh, you're always welcome. Thank okay. you, Chef. Anytime. So the you know, only thing we didn't touch on was the desserts of Puglia. What's well, good? there are so many, as I said at the beginning of the show, there are, is actually there's a dessert called the carte date. So what that is, imagine you making pasta. Yeah. You make pasta and you cut it with a pasta wheel. Right. So that you have the edges mm -hmm. all scalloped. That is fried. Mm -hmm. And then they sprinkle over the top. They drizzle over the top. Wine must. It's almost like uh, it comes with the thickness of balsamic vinegar. Reduced mm -hmm. wine syrup uh, or cooked wine. It's truly a delicacy. And then they sprinkle it with sugar. No and, the, and the kids love that. Are you kidding it's me? It's almost like the version of a doughboy. Yeah. <laughs> Carte date, it's a classic. Nice. This is your bracioletta of veal. Ooh, and that. as we said at the beginning, they can be made with pork, veal, or beef. Uh, with beef, of course, it will take a little bit longer. Yeah. Chef, okay. another great job. Thank okay. you so much for sharing all of these recipes with us. And that's some of the stuff from Puglia. There are hundreds, hundreds of dishes. Maybe we'll catch them the next time around. All right, until next time. Ciao, ciao.